stay tuned here because I will be giving you details in the next couple days about the Indianapolis conference, which will be held September 23rd and 24th. Let's just call it 22nd through the 24th. Yes, that's the same weekend as the Constellation. We hope to get a big uh, group there. I think we will. Things are shaping up that way. Uh, so set aside that weekend and that Thursday. Before that, we'll be at Dean Wilkinson's house in Evansville, which is two hours to the south of Indianapolis. I'll be giving you the exact times, but what you need to know is the place. And I will give you contact information as well. Andy May is the go-to guy, but uh, I'm going to be giving you, again, contact information in the next couple of days. In the meantime, I have a video link for you, and I, I want to read something to you from a website before I get back to Isaiah 43, where I left off, I believe, last Thursday, and before I go into the Ezekiel 37, the two sticks of the house of Judah and the house of Israel, which we are going to see united. That kingdom, the kingdom of Israel was split after the days of Solomon. And God had a purpose for this. And probably tomorrow when I talk to you about those two sticks being joined and the prophecy from Ezekiel, I will tell you why I think the kingdom of Israel was split while why there was a civil war why there became two kings the kings of king of israel the king of judah and i think it's for this time it's for what we're going to be seeing now let me find uh this web page i hesitate sending you here there's some gobbledygook here but a lot of it's good it's um, heavenlysign2017.com. And I'm at the section uh, slash supporting dash data dot HTML. It's concerning the seal being scrolled up in Daniel. Roll up the scroll because you're not going to understand this entire prophecy, Daniel. This is the prophecy concerning the 77s given to Israel. And it's also concerns our constellation. Of September 12th I'm quoting now I don't have uh, an attribution here I don't know the name of the author but I think this is interesting and I have a video that says the same thing this makes total sense to me what I'm about to tell you quote for many years it has been believed that this chapter of Revelation that is chapter 12 was allegorical it wasn't until recently that the technology has been available to view stellar alignments through the whole of history. And that's, that's true. That you can go back and see what a certain planet was doing on September 23rd, 3973 BC. And you can see what it's going to do were it to still be around 6,000 years from now. Back to the quote. We now know that the great sign described by John in Revelation 12 is that of a specific event which is to take place on September 23rd, 2017. This alignment has never before taken place and will never take place again. All scripture is God-breathed, 2 Timothy 3.16 and disregarding entire passages that deal with the constellations for fear of crossing over into astrology is not being true to scripture the, yes when you bring this sign up there is a fear that people will think you're getting into metaphysics you're getting into astrology you're getting into new age because again satan is an imitator of truth so he'll take truth he'll take this constellation and he'll put up an imitation right next to it, just like the Egyptian magicians did. They imitated the truth when Moses put down his rod and it became, or Aaron put down his rod and became a serpent. The magicians, using black art, did the same thing. But of course, 
My snake's bigger than your snake. The snake of Aaron and Moses devoured the snake or the serpent of the magicians, Janus and Jambres. So this passage has been allegorized. It's been looking at, it's been looked at and explained away because we until now really have not been able to see clearly the positions of stars. Now, back to the quote, Daniel 12, 4 states this, quote, but you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase, unquote. This is from the article, we are now living in the time of the end. 80 years ago, it would have been impossible to determine with precision whether the alignment on September 23rd, 2017 would take place. Even more compelling is that we would have lacked the ability to apply astronomical data to a specific date in history. Along with increased knowledge and worldwide travel, this understanding of astronomy is certainly one of those things which was sealed until the time of the end. Unquote. I think that is profoundly true. We looked at Daniel 12.4 here before. I've given you my thoughts on it. I've shown you how this era has been increasingly become complex. Knowledge is increased via computer technology. And it's happened only since the mid 1800s even later i enjoy giving you this fact and i always will to remind you of it that humanity was riding horses from the time of adam to the mid 1800s and from that time until now that short period of 1850 let's say you can say 1800 if you want in the last 2000 uh, 200 years last 200 years not 2200 years the exponential growth of knowledge of information of technology of complexity of speed of destructive power it's literally off the charts included with that are the many good things there are good things come with technology but every good thing has a dark cloud sewn into the silver lining but one of the good things is the stellarium program this software shows you the heavens during the day you know there was a time when people couldn't see the stars during the day now people can see at night people can see during the day my friend bert hunter when i was visiting him a couple years ago now i guess in georgia we were sitting on his back porch at night and he has a meadow in his backyard and he has a couple uh, horses down there anyway it was pitch black but he had these infrared or like i don't know binoculars that probably swat teams would use or the navy seals military the military has these special night vision binoculars and he had a pair of these and it was the most amazing thing you could look through them i could see the horses in the dark i could train it on the heavens and where the sky was totally black before all the stars were lit up it was like voodoo or something it's like i wanted to unhand them because they seemed whoever invented them made a pact with satan how can you see how can we see bones we got Mr. Rankin, who invented, discovered the x-ray. And now we can x-ray, we can see, since then, what we can see in the human body is unbelievable. We can see minute layers of the brain, of the human brain. And people who want to catch fish can see fish. They can cheat on the fish. The fish are doomed because... You, have, you can have sonar or radar on your boat and you can find out where the schools of fish are. It's not so much potluck, is it? It's not so much a crapshoot when you're fishing. So now we can see the heavens. 
at any time of day. We can even know what's going on in the Southern Hemisphere if you're in the Northern Hemisphere. And if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you can find out what's going on in the Northern Hemisphere because of this software, because of computer technology. Is this part of what the messenger Gabriel was saying to Daniel that in the end days, in the last times, knowledge will increase? Knowledge of Daniel's prophecy, knowledge of the times, knowledge of the seasons and knowledge of the Revelation chapter 12 constellation. I have a video for you that my sister Kelly will have a link to underneath this video. It's called September 23rd, 2017, part one, the Revelation 12 sign unlocking Daniel's sealed prophecies. The only reason I hesitate sending you this is because the beginning of this thing, the it, the introduction is so ridiculous it's corny i'm talking about the music and the drum beats and the drama and the just the the hollywood techniques of introducing this video it's absurd it's ridiculous if you have great truth and there is mature truth in this video you don't need this stupid hollywood introduction with fanfare and drum beats and it's absolutely absurd and i'm embarrassed about it but the substance of the video is significant and so i recommend that to you now okay now i'm going to fulfill my promise to you i'm going to go to back to isaiah chapter 43 and of course i'll be continuing with this tomorrow since it's a little late in the show right now but I told you that what I'm looking for on September 24th is a people having a greater desire for Israel things, a greater desire for law, even greater than they have now, and a desire to return to Israel. And I am going to be showing you also the seven ecclesias. I call them a staging ground, and I like that. I'm going to go with that. I already went with it, apparently, but now I'm going to stick to it. The seven ecclesias that will exist will be a staging ground where the 144,000 and part of the vast throng will be prepared in this part of being prepared in the wilderness to take the kingdom to go out into the earth during the last seven years and to prophesy because God will have his witnesses on this earth just as we today are witnesses on the earth of the peace of God the 144,000 who will be sealed to go through the day of indignation. They will be witnesses on the earth to the coming kingdom. They will be explaining to people. And then the Aeonian evangel goes out by supernatural means later. All bets are off during the last three and a half years. There's going to be supernatural things that be difficult to describe t t today. But the, the plagues of Egypt were a prototype of People say, I've never seen water turn to blood. I've never seen hailstones. I've never seen the wholesale death zender that you're talking about. Well, I'm just a relayer of information. Uh, if you haven't seen it, watch the movie The Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston and Yule Brenner. Read, better yet, read the book of Exodus. This has been done before, but it's going to be done on a scale and on a scope never before seen. So what I'm looking for is for Israel to come into a general awareness I'm looking for the remnant to become a vast army that Satan will vehemently oppose. And there's going to be wars in the heavens that will be manifested on the earth. Isaiah 43, 4 through 10. Why am I telling you this? I want to back up a little bit because, again, I'm a few days removed from the first time I introduced uh, this topic when I told you about the Valley of Dry Bones I said that this was the expectation of Israel that was dried up that is now coming back and God is going to perform a miracle and he's going to say for those who are not my people there they will become the people of God in the place where it was said you are not my people I should go to that prophecy I'll do it tomorrow I'll do it tomorrow not my people there it will be said of you you're the people of God the tricky thing there is it's the same people. This is not replacement theology where God is transferring the blessings he promised to Israel to another people, namely 
today's church, namely the body of Christ, namely Christians. This is called replacement theology, where God is done with Israel, and he's replacing his natural people. He's replacing the people he called the literal descendants of Abraham. He's replacing them. And the promises he made to them are now not literally being fulfilled, but we can't say they won't be fulfilled because they're being allegorically fulfilled in a different people. Well, no, this is just wrong. This is false. It sounds good. It's attractive, but it's false. I don't care how attractive it is. In the very place and with the very people that it was said, you're not my people. God divorced Israel for her unfaithfulness. And she's been unfaithful ever since. In that very place, with that very people, he will say, now you're the people of God. And we see this happening in Ezekiel 37. And to review, I call this the Ezekiel 37 shocker, the valley of dry bones. Can these bones live? Can a nation whose expectation is decimated live? Answer is yes. And all it takes is God breathing the breath of life into them. This is review, I know. Just as he did with Adam when he formed that being of the soil and he breathed into it, and Adam became a living soul. The soil became animated. Adam became a soul. In the Valley of Dry Bones, the bones are figurative and therefore so are the graves. But the graves are the churches today, I believe. This is my unique view of this. My unique teaching. The graves... Of Israelites are your religious people and this will introduce you to what I'm gonna do before the end of this week I think is to tell you why God split the kingdom of Israel after the reign of Solomon why there was a civil war why ten tribes went north and why two tribes stayed to the south so the Spirit of God comes on the Valley of Dry Bones it comes on the people of Israel he raises his people, rattles them, and fills them with the Spirit of God in startling measure. That's why I think this is going to be noticed. This is nothing less than the dawn of the new covenant. Someone took issue with me saying, Martin, how can you say it's the new covenant? I said it's the beginning of the new covenant. It's the dawn of a new era. And I said that there could be overlap. I did say there could be overlap. There probably would be overlap between the body of Christ and Israel, just like there was in the first century. Remember, there was overlap in that Israel was becoming less and less, and the body of Christ was becoming more and more, and they passed each other like ships passing in the night, except there was some conflict. There was some skirmishes. We should have no skirmishes today. We should be at peace with all humanity, with the ruling authorities, and we could we can see we can be aware that after september 23rd i believe israel is going to begin to be awakened and the remnant is turning to an army and we'll be able to see indications of it maybe even as we're being uh, snatched away i'm not saying that the overlap is going to be right down the line we could be snatched away before that, but I'm already getting whiffs of it. I've been getting whiffs of it, to be honest with you. I've been sensing this. That's a bad word. I don't. I want to take that away. I want to retract that. I've been noticing this by my, in my studies since I began looking into the remnant of Israel. This was back in 1986. Yeah, 30 years ago, I was reading about. Uh, this group of people on the earth who were very interested in kingdom truths and they liked the idea that they would be ruling the the earth and they will like the idea of tracing their genealogy to Abraham so it's the dawn of the new covenant it's the whole house of Israel not the house of Judah that now exists in secret yesterday I talked about the secret of lawlessness the secret of godliness and I talked about the secret of the chiefs of this eon now I'm talking about the secret of the house of Israel. This is my. This is the 14th secret introduced to you today by me. The 14th secret is that the house of Israel exists in secret, been hidden, it's been hidden by God, just like we have been hidden by God. We have been interspersed among God the other inhabitants of this planet, light bearers, light bringers, despised by most, revered by few, and 
here's another secret that we've that we're scattered that we're not a unit and this is the lament that i'm alone martin i'm all over the place well so is the house of israel but they do gather together and so do we in limited amounts in limited places for limited times we have conferences or we meet or two or three of us meet in a living room the house of israel has been doing the same thing over the years while it has existed in secret while it has existed in secret even to itself it is congregated in churches it is congregated in churches to put the ten commandments on the walls in churches that have matthew mark luke and john written on the thresholds in churches that really do not give only lip service to the apostle paul it's been a secret but when these marvels begin to happen god's going to lift the veil off and the secret is going to be discarded for the revelation god is going to begin opening the eyes of his people israel and they're going to see now they only say that they see because they are spiritual descendants i'll say that of the pharisees who say they saw they say we see they didn't see anything they're blind as the night they're blind as the inside of a cave they're blind as the inside of a sepulcher they're like dumb animals going to slaughter but in the place where it was said not my people and with that people of whom it is said in in that place and with that people it is going to be said you are the people of god 